Thank you, everyone. So to talk you through a little bit about Siren Co, um, one of the quite quotes that are up on the wall is the one that's in front of you now. So beautiful forms and compositions not made by chance, nor can they ever be in any material made at small expense, which we think is really important for a small business store. So to talk a little bit about pre Desire and Co. So if you've ever been to the side before, Desire and Co. is located at the back of the atrium. And prior to being Desire and Co., it was our museum store. And unfortunately, when I started with the business nearly two years ago, I identified that the store didn't really have any identity at all. Um, it was filled with a lot of goods not really relating to the world of Wedgwood as a visitor attraction, nor did it relate to the being a Wedgwood collection. Um, however, there is plenty of opportunity, as we now know, with it being in the main atrium, the passing trade to the toilets and decorating studio, along with the factory tour. Um, it's also quite a big waiting point for large groups. And then back in 20, April of 2021, um, we had a new head of the Wheel to Wedgwood join the site called Gemma Harrison. Um, she previously worked for a company in Stafford fantastic lady and a great addition to Wheels of Wedgwood and her main aim was to bring footfall to the site so we started to look at areas of the business that weren't really working which if any of you do follow along with Wheels of Wedgwood you will see the developments that we've been doing um, Niall Keating's just opened a restaurant called Luna um, which is another great addition to the site so we first of all joined with a company called Creative Makers they held a 12-week pop-up in the space. Their concept is about bringing small businesses to the high street. What we identified when they were here was that a lot of their makers were based in Manchester and further afield, um, or there was a lot of London-based makers, but there wasn't that many from Staffordshire. And as we know, there are some incredibly talented people in Staffordshire. Um, so after the 12-week pop-up, they um, declined to continue with us because they wanted to focus on other projects. They'd opened a store in Leeds in the city centre there um, and they wanted to develop their market opportunity, which at that time we unfortunately couldn't offer. Um, however, we've left the doors open with them for future ventures and we do hope that they'll come back to us in the future. So post the pop-up, we had a decision to make, which was we could either go back to the original museum concept we could create something new or we could build on the pop-up that creative makers had. Um, we've also got pre-existing relationships as we used to hold a monthly market. So there was a lot of makers from those markets who wanted to do something at the site. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, a market opportunity just wasn't really there for us. Um, we'd also closed the dining hall at that point, which meant that we couldn't see this large groups of people. Um, but we also knew because of the pandemic that we wanted to support local businesses whilst we'd been closed or in sort of a phase reopening. We'd been working with external companies like Bedford and Basel, which is a gentleman called Alex who'd through the pandemic converted an old Bedford pickup truck into a pizza oven. He's a wonderful, wonderful gentleman. Um, it's a fantastic business that he's got and thankfully it is going from strength to strength for him so we'd already been working with him and we wanted to develop it so during a brainstorming special session we spoke about how Josiah would have supported the local people his workers and the area which led to Josiah and Co being born so how hard can setting up a little shop be I thought to myself it can't be that hard at all how wrong was I so um, I had two weeks to source 25 Staffordshire based makers, which when you're starting afresh, where do all these contacts come from? Um, so I found that Instagram was my best tool, um, just reaching out to as many people as I could saying, look, I've got this really exciting opportunity, would you like to get involved? Whilst all this was going on, I was still trying to do what I like to call my day job, which is running the other two stores on site, as well as doing the um, it's the interior design sales and the business sales. Um, so it was a hell of a lot of work, um, but it was a wonderful thing. We had to start afresh with contracts and looking at the legal side of things as well, which I'd had no experience in at all. So thankfully. Um, 
our finance director was incredibly supportive with that. Um, from the market and also just from speaking to people. So there's a company called The Wandering Bee, who are now, it's a local candle company who now work out of World of Wedgwood. They rent a space here. So B from The Wandering Bee and then Grace from Cushy Paws. And Cushy Paws, the local textiles company, um, attends the Newcastle market. So many of you may have seen here. They were great supports with insider knowledge on how I could make it work best for the maker. So I always knew that I wanted Desire & Co to be about the makers and making the makers as much money as we possibly could. Thankfully, the company, World of Wedgwood, were on board with the fact that the store just needed to break even because it was driving additional footfall to the site and to other areas of the business. So after we've got all of our ducks in a row, we had 48 hours to launch the store, which two 12 hour shifts was a lot. And I'm very grateful to the maker support who helped us um, label all the products. And also my mum, who bless her, worked two full days for free. <laughs> so she was a wonderful support there. Um, we worked with, as you can see, the logo here. So we worked with a local design company called We Are Cooler who created the logo for us and they've been a consistent, incredible support. I've got some pictures in here of our Instagram. So Instagram has been one of our biggest tools in sort of getting the word out there about this new store. Um, I always knew that um, initially Desire & Co was only meant to be for a 12-week pop-up just to get us through the Christmas period and the company said if I could prove it worked I could keep it. Thankfully we didn't announce that it was a pop-up which meant that all the footfall was natural. It was incredibly well received. It was incredibly well received by local media and um, their support has been fantastic. They came on the opening day, ran a feature um, both in the newspaper and online, which was fantastic. Um, as you can see at the moment, we're up to two and a half thousand followers on Instagram, which is again, all natural growth, which I'm really very proud of. Um, and in after, well, after the 12 weeks in January, I was given the good news that the store was a permanent fixture. So we then started to look at what this meant for us. And I'm really pleased to say it means that we've been able to create three permanent fixtures in the store. One of them um, was taken by Grace, who since November of last year has been working with Josiah and Co alongside her own small business, Cushy Paws. She took on an additional admin support role, which is wonderful because not only do we get that insight into what is a small business, but she supports us on the ground up as well. So we are now up to 48 Staffordshire makers available in the store, which I think is wonderful. And we've got everything from oat cake mixes to bean to bar chocolate, textiles, ceramics, glass, people making out of their sheds, in their units, in their kitchens. It's just a big old family affair, which is nice. We're one big happy family now. Um, so what is next? So we've now got plans to expand the concept within the next six months. Josiah & Co is, fingers crossed, if all goes to plan, moving into a larger location, which I think for the local area and also local businesses will be wonderful. It means we can open that space up to even more people, um, more opportunity and showcasing more products. Um, we also want to collaborate with different types of business, businesses, so I'd really like to look at doing fresh food, so cheese and milk and all those lovely things. Um, and over the next sort of 12 months, online development is going to be really important, so we're looking to set up an online store um, to see, so that we can reach further people. Um, and then when we first started, one of the things within the contract for the makers is about we really want it to feel like a community and thankfully it does so we set up a networking event where local media came and also local bloggers all of the makers attended we had two and a half hours in Desire Co where everybody networked which was completely free for them to and they all brought family and friends with them which was lovely so over the next six months we're putting two more of those on for our makers 
so that we can get them all together and we're really pleased to see that it started some initial conversations so a lot of our makers are looking to collaborate with each other and develop products and um, we've got one of our candle companies is doing um, a bespoke candle for a local blogger for a gift so it's all about what we can do as retailers to support their business and the growth of their business I always say if I can, if the makers have to do one less market a year, then I feel like I've done my job properly. And hopefully one day we see them all in Selfridges and Harrods and it'll be a fantastic thing. <laughs> so here are some photos of the store for you to see, those of you that have not been down. Um, we change the front section sort of seasonally so that it always looks fresh and new in there. Um, and we stagger our new um, makers so that it's not all the same all the time. And then finally, if you'd like to get in touch with us or you want to follow along, then you can see on the screen there our hashtags for Instagram or apps. And I think that's everything.